she did some work on PRP and uh, carboxytherapy combination for the treatment of chronic pain in all aspects of chronic pain. And uh, we're keen to see the results of this study. Ayubi? Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. No. So, have you enjoyed your conference so far? So, today we're going to talk about plasma and carboxytherapy. Can't hear you. Sorry, I cannot hear you. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Okay. So we're going to talk about platelet-rich plasma and carboxy therapy, and we're going to talk about the combination of these two therapies, and we're going to apply them in patients with chronic pain. So we all know what um, wait. so we all know what platelet-rich plasma is. PLP is a biological product that has um, an autonomous fraction of uh, pla with platelet blood autonomous fraction with a platelet concentration above the baseline. It not only contains this high number of platelets, but it also contains a high, a high level, a high number of protein factors, growth factors, chemicals, cytokines, and of course the plasma proteins. It is important because we have angiogenesis with the help of it. We have a proliferation of the fibroblasts, and we have osteoblasts and vascular cells. It promotes the collagen synthesis and of course, it's important for cartilage regeneration and formation. So if this is not enough for you, then we have to bear in mind that it does has a very big um, uh, anti-inflammatory effect. Um, the, other uh, the other fact is that we use carboxytherapy. What is carboxytherapy? Carboxytherapy is the controlled insufflation of sterile carbon dioxide uh, for uh, therapeutic purposes uh, in its gaseous state. What happens is that once the local um, carbon dioxide is increased, then we have this local concentration, uh, increase in the concentration leads to the carbonic acid formation. And with the help of the carbonic um, anhydrase enzyme, uh, which leads to the liberation of the hydrogen ions, which in turn, uh, with bicarbonate ions. This, this too will decrease the local pH. This pH acidity will actually effect, um, enhance the bore effect, and with this, the dissociation curve of oxygen and oxygen will be shifted to the right, so more oxygen will be supplied to the, to the surrounding tissues. Um, additionally, we have an increase in the release of the endothelial growth factor, fibroblastic growth factor, and angiogenin protein, because it does, all these three stimulate the tissue repair, and the angiogenesis, and it speed up the process of the formation of the, of the new vessels. So what we did is we decided to combine these two therapies. Yes, we combined these two therapies, these two very distinct therapies. Um, in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, these people are in constant pain. They, they, they can't brush their teeth, they can't lift their, or they can't brush their hair, they can't open their window, they're, they're in constant pain. And uh, we did it in patients with uh, a frozen shoulder, post-traumatic frozen shoulder, and a patient with gout. So what we did was, we, did, we took 4 ml tubes, 4 5 ml tubes of, um, with anti glycol saturate um, dextrose because one, we wanted to uh, avoid the calculation of scale for obvious reasons and two, we wanted to, um, uh, to have the pH level of the platelets at 7.2. We centrifuged them at um, 2,800 breath per minute for 8 um, uh, minutes and we activated for, uh, with calcium, we activated the PAP with calcium chloride to get more uniform results. And then we injected this 15 ml we got from the PAP in the shoulder uh, for the two uh, for the rheumatoid arthritis and the frozen shoulder. And then we injected the, obviously, each patient got the 15 ml. And uh, then we injected in the metatal, some of the joints for patients with, um, with gout. Um, after the PAP was injected there, we, uh, um, we did the carboxysufflation with a flow of 30 uh, C per minute and each patient goes 300 uh, total CC and we use 30 G 25 ml needle. Uh, each patient goes on eight, um, a session once a month for every month and in total it was, um, it was an, eight, um, an eight month uh, uh, period of sessions. So what happened is the the, the forty year the fifty seven year old with the gout um, his pain and his edema it was to improved 
from the first session. After four days, he called me. He was happy. Uh, there was no, um, th there was a remission of the, of the inflammatory phase, phase of the gout, and there was complete remission after the fourth session. Um, there were no uh, reoccurrence. Uh, we. We still did those other four sessions uh, just to keep it at a very low uh, level and avoid any re um, uh, reoccurrence. And uh, for the rheumatoid arthritis person, her, her, her problem was, is a 64 year old, so her problem was mostly in the uh, shoulder articulation and uh, elbow. And she felt she was she didn't have any um, effects on the first session, but then after the second and the third, especially after the third, there was remission. After the fifth session, we had a pain improvement, and the the, the, motion, the range of motion came after the seventh session. We did another extra one just to keep it um, on the safe side. And for the post traumatic shoulder, uh, it was a um, 56-year-old person. He was uh, in an NVA uh, accident, and he couldn't move his shoulder at all. His leg was uh, stiff, he was frozen, he was heavy, he couldn't move it. Um, he was in constant pain. So after the second POP session with, with the Kaboxic, um, uh, he, was, he was feeling better, he was improving. And he will had absolutely no pain, no pain after the fifth session, and then his range motion uh, recovered, not 100% because now he's 100%, but it was recovered after the seventh session. So as a conclusion, we have uh, several improvements in all these uh, case, cases. There is restriction of the vascular circulation, and because we have an autologous, this is an autologous angiogenesis, and we have culture information and inflammatory processes, which eventually led to the pain elimination and the restriction of the range of motion. Uh, bear in mind that these therapies, this special POP, is an autologous, um, it's, it's an autologous treatment. There is no way that something can go wrong, because if nothing goes well, at least you won't harm the patient. So, thank you. Yes, please. Hello, good morning. Uh, that is an excellent presentation. Uh, novel ideas, uh, brilliant. Um, can, can I ask, um, how many patients have you done uh, for, uh, uh, for, for this procedure? Is it just one patient, or three yeah, patients? No, it was three patients. The time that this was written. Uh, right. After that, because you know it's an everyday, it's a daily basis. I mean, okay. the practice is every day for every day. So so far we have done around twelve. But it was by the time we we out of this, uh, it was you know it's, it was a couple of months ago. Yeah, okay. So yeah. yeah. The, the, and, and and have they stopped? They might be on other medications for gout that no, they're arthritis. not. No, no, they, they have the clear medical history. There's no comorbidities, no. No, no, they have, they have they stop their existing medications for you. Uh, so, so um, they might be on medications, uh, you know, in flix maps and things like that for uh, their inflammatory arthritis. Uh, for the PFP, no, we don't have any. Um, no, other medications. So they might be taking anti inflammatory medications, yes. etc. They didn't no, stop it. No, no, no. No, they just fine. They, they continue nothing. There's no change in the existing medications. No, no. While you have the treatment. No. Okay, thank you. Just to um, explain the conflicting uh, treatments. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, Mother. Thank you for the interesting presentation. Dr. Mudan. One question, please. The first part, you don't believe this 15 ml multiplied by 8 session per month with large volume, it will come at 120 ml per month. Number two, regarding the clinical improvement. Did you check any lab, uh, laboratory uh, like ASR, CRB, the inflammatory markers? Uh, they were uh, at the beginning. Uh, I asked, we asked for a complete uh, checkup, and then we saw that it was starting to diminish. But 120 ml per month is not large volume. You say if not harm, uh, sorry, if not useful, it will not harm. What the evidence that PRB is 100% safe? Without any adverse effect? It has absolutely no adverse effect. Because it is an autologous treatment. I'm taking it from you and I'm giving it to you. 
So there's no way you can have a reaction to you, because it's you. I mean, I'm taking your blood. No adverse effect at all? Adverse effect, not toxic. The, uh, the, the, the worst thing I had was some bruises. Only? Yeah. And regarding nanosteroidal, how long did it stop before treatment? I'm sorry? Nanosteroidal anti inflammatory, NSAIDs. Oh, how they long? weren't on medication. They were not on medication? No, none of them. Okay, thank you. None of them. They were just uh, people who were in pain and they had tried everything, they had stopped everything, and then they were addressed to me. I think you know about the treatment, uh, really interested. On the average, is 12 patients have done this, right? So far, yes. Yes. The, on average, what was the efficacy of your treatment and the pain reduction for the first session? On average, on those patients, are we receiving more than 50 or less than 50% pain reduction? I would say more than 50. More than 50. Thank you very much. Usually, the, it takes some, um, PLP is not working on the first month, usually on the first session. It does require about a couple of months, with basically it's two sessions. After the third session, people come and say, you know what, I feel better. I never thought I would actually feel it because I didn't feel it in the first session. But it, it does take a, a little bit to, um, uh, to work. To so you're interested to see a long term follow up on those fair yes. reduction. Yes. If you could publish that, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. If you want to take this study to the next level, yes. uh, did you think about statistical analysis to see how many patients you need? Months, you yeah. need how many uh, 10,000 patients to have statistically? 10,000 patients would be fantastic, I think. Hmm? 10,000 patients would be fantastic. And totally and did, you do this, did you do this statistical uh, analysis? It's ongoing, so oh, no. okay. hopefully by 2025 we will have the best. Uh, okay, for the next meeting uh, again. Sorry, just a small question, please. What pain relief did you give the patient after the PRP? After the PRP. It's a painful procedure, you know. Yes, I do. it is a painful procedure, but I gave them before. So there's this pistol that we're using, the Comfort N. So what did, did you give them, sorry? Comfort N. I did it before the session. I, I, I'm explaining you now. Yes. So we have this... this no, no. <laughs> sorry. So there's this pistol, it's called Comfort In. Uh, so what happens is that you take a little bit of uh, Xalagane, just, just that, uh, around uh, 10 ml, and then you just puncture it on the, on the, on the side that you're going to inhale, um, apply the PP. So what happens is that it goes up your you just uh, enhances the product, and then you have the local anesthesia, and then you can do the PP. Okay, so local filter. Yes, just local filter. Local subcutaneous or? Subcutaneous. And then I go into the integration, and then I just use the, the my USB, uh, my, sorry, my ultrasound. Oh, you do this as a ultrasound guidance? Yes. So you, you look for trigger points? I do, I do. Think it's about, the majority of the PAP was put on um, uh, with ultrasound integrations, and then for the, uh, just a little bit on the, on the trigger points, especially for the shoulder. Okay. What's your age group? You know, BRP with increased the age, the growth factor is decrease. Uh, BRP is work after, you, you, you told me, 64 patient, 64 years old. Yes. BRP is work in this age group? Yes, absolutely. The growth factor is very less in this age group. They were, it was working. <laughs> they were very well hydrated, they were very, uh, they no. had um, With the age, growth factors decrease with TRP? Uh, it doesn't have an age group, it doesn't have an age. You can do it on an 8-year-old if it's sits down, mm -hmm. and you could do it on a 100-year-old if he wants to. Mm -hmm. You are being in higher ages, not talking at all. Okay, I will have that in mind for the next uh, Yeah, so you have, you have no ideas for your study for the next level, next, uh, next time? Uh, you gathered some of the ideas and, and comments. Comment, last one. Any limitation or restriction of acute or chronic? For myself, for, 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 for the PAP, no, but for the capoxy therapy, you're not supposed to have renal mm. failure or kidney failure. Oh, sorry. I mean, uh, for shoulder, I 
uh, both traumatic, it may be a kind of acute, and uh, for the gout and uh, rheumatoid arthritis, maybe a chronic status. So for acute, it may be the normal course for recovery to be six or seven months. And for, for chronic, it may be more solid uh, to apply for this for chronic patient. Not for acute, acute may be uh, a kind of normal recovery uh, will be taking five, six months. So you may not be able to uh, solidly differentiate between is it recovery from the procedure, from the uh, combined physiotherapy, medication, or the, just the normal course, or from the effect of the procedure. But for the chronic uh, states like gout or rheumatoid arthritis, you may be having more, more solid data for uh, the effect of the procedure, because the patient is already a chronic, just a uh, short. Yes, there are multiple sessions. Yes, there are multiple sessions, right? Both yes, sessions. Yes, there are multiple sessions. We're speaking for months, not now. I mean, there was a follow-up. Thank you. Okay. okay. So uh, our next uh, presenter will be uh, Dr. Shikal. And the uh, topic will be...